Friends, today is Friday, the 23rd of October, and we're in the cathedral, and over my left shoulder here, we see a little light coming through our beautiful stained glass windows. A few hours ago in the cathedral last evening, we celebrated confirmation, the third celebration of confirmation in the parish. It, uh, has taken us some time to confirm our young people who were supposed to be confirmed uh, last April, but uh, the COVID pandemic has gotten in the way. But last evening, we finally celebrated with the last group of 12 students, Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit coming upon them. And as we gather uh, this morning, we um, have an interesting gospel interesting gospel. Of course, they're all interesting, but this one in particular, because Jesus criticizes the crowd. He's speaking to the crowd. He criticizes them for their ability to interpret the earth and the sky, the earth and the sky. You see this and you say that. What, uh, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say it's going to rain, and so it does, and so on. They can interpret the signs but somehow they are not able to interpret the present time. They do not see who is among them, Jesus, the Messiah, and the kingdom breaking into the world. But the question, of course, comes to us. You know, the scriptures are always present. How do we interpret? How do we interpret the present time? Are we able to do so? And do we do so correctly? Or would Jesus criticize us as well? as being able to interpret certain things like the weather, but somehow we don't see what is happening in our midst. So how do we, as we look at the world, how do we look at it and how do we interpret it? Well, different kinds of ways. Politically, we can look at things politically. We can look at things sociologically. We can look at things culturally, we can look at things economically, and we do. And we get that information just by keeping our ear to the ground, listening to the news, reading, and so on. But note how the different, note how different the Bible is when it comes to interpreting the time and life and culture. Everything was seen through a lens of theology, a lens of God, theologically. All those other ways are fine, sociologically, economically, politically, during these days before the election. But the Bible and scripture look at life and culture through the lens of God, the lens of theology, asking themselves, well, what is God up to? What is happening here? with the idea that once that understanding comes, they, we, can join in that plan of God and work with it and for it. And so that uh, is kind of the message that we receive that the theological lens, the scriptural lens, is probably the truest lens of all. But you know, deep down, Deep down, all of us are probably kind of closet deists, closet deists. A deist is a person who believes in God, but believes that God is very distant and takes no interest in the world. Kind of, it was the uh, image of the clockmaker who winds up a clock and lets it run, but does not intervene himself. God distant and disinterested. But that's not what the scriptures tell us. That's not what the scriptures tell us. The scriptures tell us that God is very interested in the world, that God loves the world. God so loved the world, he sent his son. And that God actively involves himself in everything that takes place all the affairs of the world, and that's the biblical reading. And thus do we, as we look around, what do we see? How do we see God acting, and what does it mean? What does it mean? 
you know, I can think of no better source to help us currently, to help us interpret these signs of the times as our Holy Father's recent encyclical, which is called Fratelli Tutti, Fratelli Tutti, brothers and sisters all. And it's long, it's a long encyclical, and sometimes encyclicals are difficult to read, a little boring maybe, but uh, I have summarized the, at least a portion of it at this point, last Sunday in the bulletin, and this Sunday in the bulletin. You can pull that up online if you were not here in church. But my column last week and this week and the week after gives a summary, a summary of this reading of the signs of the times. And you know, I have to say, I almost felt that the Holy Father was writing directly to us in the United States as the chief superpower, as the main influence of culture and politics and economy throughout the world, the powerful United States, and for us to be leaders, but perhaps leaders in a different way, reading the signs of the times. And whether the Holy Father intended that or not, I don't know. Maybe everybody in every country thinks it's directed to them. But I want to just read a line or two from my column to kind of help us see what the Holy Father is doing, what he hopes to do, and what he sees as he looks out over the world, God actively involved with us. And it says uh, in the encyclical, the and Sigalil asks and addresses this question, what are the great ideals? What are the great ideals and also the tangible ways to advance for those who wish to build, for those who wish to build a more just and fraternal world in their ordinary relationships, in social life, in politics, and in institutions? The hope of Pope Francis, and I suppose the hope of all of us, is to promote a universal, universal aspiration toward fraternity and social friendship. Fraternity and social friendship. God active in the world, and we can be cooperators, cooperators at a time when the world most needs it, and our country included as we approach the election coming up. Peace and understanding, fraternity, social friendship. Read the signs of the times and act accordingly with the Lord. Hold that thought, and we'll see you tomorrow.